Welcome to Property Ladder, the series that follows fledgling developers as they try to make money from doing up houses. This week we're in Caterham, Surrey, to meet Gina Reedy. Gina's turned her back on her career as an employment lawyer and bought this three-bedroom house as her first development. She intends to live here with her two children, Jessica and Dominic, and husband Steve, while she develops it and then gets it straight back on the market. This is a new business venture for the whole family. So it's taking that balance and remembering all the time, this is a business decision, this is not my home. Yeah, so we'll just see how it goes. Let's hope it's a success. Gina plans to project manage the job and do as much of the work as she can herself. Despite never having done any DIY, she's given herself just four months to get the house finished and back on the market. So how much did you buy the house for? About 372,000. Right, and then you're planning on spending 18 on it. And how much were the fees and stamp duty on it? About 15,000, so it'll bring it up to about 405. And how much are you planning on selling it for? Around 450. So that's a, a rough sort of 40,000 pound profit all going well if you can stick to these figures yep. i mean it's clear to me that it's essential that you don't spend any more gina's budget is very small for this size of development but if she can manage her spending she expects to earn a fantastic profit gina bought the property for three hundred eighty-seven thousand pounds including stamp duty and fees her budget is just eighteen thousand pounds to do all the work if she does sell it for £450,000, she'd earn £45,000. To stick to that budget, Gina will have to watch every penny because the house needs a complete overhaul. Along with the new windows, new bathroom and a new kitchen, the property needs entirely redecorating, new plumbing and some rewiring. The house was built in 1958 and not much has changed since. The ground floor is quite spacious with two big reception rooms at the front. And to the rear, there's a large, awkwardly laid out kitchen, a separate utility room and a small shower room. Upstairs feels much smaller. It's got three average sized bedrooms, one small family bathroom and a separate loo just outside on the landing. Everything has a 50s feel but nowhere more so than the kitchen. Wow, it's a real timepiece, isn't it? It is. Look at that ceiling. I can imagine this in a museum, you know. Yes. <laughs> one of those ones where they say, and this is how it used to be. Yes. Look at the tiles. Have you ever seen anything? It's like a loo. <laughs> you know, a, like a government loo block that you go in. <laughs> so this, you're going to rip this amazing kitchen out and put a, a new kitchen in presumably yes um i think i think this is the retro look that maybe one day will come back in but i just hate it and i think any family coming to buy a house in this area would not like it no it's probably best that it comes out i have to admit so. even though i think it's very amusing here <laughs> gina plans to knock through into the utility room to create a large kitchen diner which is a great idea but I think her layout could be even further improved. She's keeping the workspace where it is and putting the table and chairs in the old utility room, but it's cramped and looks onto the garage. If she swapped them round, she'd have a bigger space for the table, which would then overlook the garden. This is very peculiar, isn't it? This is the staircase, is it? Yes, it's the stairs, and this is the back of it, so as soon as you come in, it feels like that. I think we need to open this out somehow, and I'm not sure how it is, but I think it's by turning the stairs. Right. So you'd walk in, and the stairs would run this way, so and this wouldn't be here, so you'd actually get to see all the glass. And what's your, what's your total budget for the whole house? 18,000. Right, because that's a really expensive job to turn a staircase. Anyway, let's see upstairs okay, fine. where it leads to. What are your big plans with upstairs? Well, we really need to get four bedrooms up here, come hell or high water. And I, my ideas up here are to change around some of the spaces in the different rooms. But I think we also need an ensuite. 
because if this is going to sell for maximum profit, it needs to be four bedrooms and an ensuite. Gina's big ideas on her little budget don't stop at the stairs. To get a £450,000 resale, she needs to create a fourth bedroom and an ensuite, but there simply isn't the square footage. She's planning on creating the ensuite for the master bedroom by dividing the smallest room. But that would leave that room barely bigger than the bed. Then she plans to turn the bathroom into the fourth bedroom, but I don't think she can really have thought this all through. You'll lose the bathroom. Where will the bathroom go? Well, um, the loo's in here already, so you've already got all the pipe work there. So my plan would be to have a bathroom fitted somehow along here. Somehow. And to make... <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's... I don't know quite how, but in my head, that's the solution. So we can make that bathroom into the fourth bedroom. It's going to mean that this hallway is very constricted and very dark. It'll come up and be this little tiny corridor going through. And I'm not actually sure you'll be able to fit a, a whole bathroom in this hallway space. This is the bedroom that we're going to divide to get the ensuite. Right. Uh, I have to say, this is a very small room. Mm. And why do you want a four-bedroom four house so much? Because in this street, I think that's what we need to make the most profit. Because four-bedroom houses with two bathrooms sell for more than three-bedroom houses with one bathroom. Three-bedroom houses with one bathroom really struggle to sell. But if you don't have the square footage, that's, I mean, you can't just chop up bedrooms endlessly and end up with lots of little... I know, uh, that's the issue. It's cuts. getting a quart into a pint pot, isn't it? If there was sufficient square footage, an ensuite and an extra bedroom would add value. But this house simply isn't big enough. And without these extra rooms, it will be incredibly difficult for Gina to reach her target selling price. Though there is a simple solution. Really, there isn't the square footage, so you have a choice. You either don't have the fourth bedroom or you build that here, mm. which is kind of asking to be built out in a way. But it's the cost. The rough quote I've had is about 30,000 for it. And it's weighing up whether that would make that much of a difference in terms of my profit. Gina could make money by building an extension above the kitchen, but she hasn't got the budget to pull it off. And her plans to squeeze these rooms in just won't work. This is a big development. Gina's investing over £400,000 and she's supposed to be project managing the job. But she hasn't drawn any plans, she hasn't decided what work to do, and her budget's totally inadequate. Gina hasn't allowed anything for her new staircase, or to hide the pipes, or change the radiators, or do the garden. The quote for the building work is £8,500, but the jobs keep changing. There's £2,500 for the new bathrooms, just £1,500 for the decorating, £3,000 for the kitchen, and 2,500 for the contingency, making a total of 18,000 pounds. It's a phenomenal amount of work. Where did you get the figure of 18,000 pounds from? Well, a bit of it was, take it from the air, but I- So it could have been 5,000 or 50,000 equally well. Yeah, but I've had quotes, quite thorough quotes for the building work. Um, and so I've allocated it accordingly. I'm also going to try and do a lot of the work myself but gosh so so which bits of the work are you all the stripping out and laboring and decorating most of the decorating uh, the only thing that i feel that we're not skilled either of us to do is the plastering so when it comes to plastering the ceilings and things like that we'll get someone else to do it and any wiring will be as part of the building work you need to get very clear at this stage what you're doing mm. that's the key because if you carry on being quite sort of wishy-washy about what you're doing here and not sort of a bit indecisive, you'll end up spending a fortune. The golden rule is to decide exactly what you're doing and exactly what it will cost you before you even buy a property. Gina has no clear plan of what work she wants done, the order she wants it done in, or how much it will really cost. But work starts anyway. And Gina discovers she has no idea what she's let herself in for. This wasn't in the plan. Amateur 
developer Gina Reedy sold the family home and used their capital to buy this three-bedroom, one-bathroom house. She plans to live on site with her family while turning it into a fully modernized four-bedroom, two-bathroom home for just £18,000. But the house just isn't big enough for her plans and neither's the budget. So we're going to knock right through here and make this all one room and we'll make an ensuite loo and wash basin. And if we can find a way to turn the staircase so that we can make a two-storey hall, that would be really nice. If Gina's going to project manage this development, she really does need to make up her mind and stick to it. Definitely the four bedrooms. I've got to find a way of doing it. We're not going to try and squeeze the fourth bedroom in. Because I still think the fourth bedroom is really essential. One thing Gina is sure about is that she wants this house to sell for £450,000. She really needs the fourth bedroom and a fantastic finish to get anywhere near that sort of price. But Caterham is a desirable area and appeals to growing families, which is Gina's target market. It's an easy commute into London and only minutes from the M25. It's also got a villagey feel with plenty of countryside on the doorstep. Properties similar to Gina's range from 300 to 500,000 pounds. So to get 450,000, she'll have to make her development really stand out. It's on a good road though, and close to a popular school, but that's no guarantee she'll get top whack for her property. Gina's house has an awkward layout, and to sort it out is gonna be really tough on 18,000 pounds particularly as Gina still hasn't made up her mind what she wants done. You should never start a development without having a proper schedule of works. Otherwise, the list for your builder will keep growing and so will your budget. I don't even know how much detail we need, but what I've done is I've, I've tried to break it up into the kitchen, the coat room, the bathroom, and then this great title, Other Work. And the biggest item isn't even in her budget. Here we go, turn the stairs and fit a new staircase. Sounds easy. But we're now not having the cloak room, the ensuite, and we now are having a porch, a hole through here. Sink heating pipes into walls. Right. So when are we talking about having the whole thing completed? Because I know completion dates are always those airy fairy things, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Mm. Well, it just depends on how much you keep on adding that one. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to do this job? <laughs> Don't you say that. You haven't even started yet and you haven't doubts. If Jean is going to project manage this, she really needs to get a grip on the job. She should have decided weeks ago what was going to be done. Then she could have got accurate costings. Work started, she's risking over £400,000, but no one has a clear idea of what's supposed to be happening. Well, that's, that's not going, is it? Because if they came up, this was going to be brought across was it and the door was going to go in here well wasn't it? i was about to say oh, right. what i was thinking of doing was even without a proper schedule the builders are hard at work this is hard living like this because it's just chaos <laughs> I'm worried that Gina just doesn't realise how big this job is and what it really entails. I noticed that all your stuff's still in here now, covered in dust. Were you going to pack up at some point or not? <laughs> I had no idea about the filth. Right. And, oh my God, the dust! <laughs> Sarah. And so now I'm realising how naive I was and how set of viable, so I'm packing it. People often think living in your development saves money because you're only paying out on one property. But the work takes longer and keeping the house habitable can cost you more in the long run. Look, I have to keep, at the moment, all my cleaning stuff in there. And it's just so risky at the moment for the kids. So having somewhere where I can shut everything away and not have it in the kitchen or dining area is really important. It's really tough living on site, particularly if you have young children. But Gina's got to stop treating this like a home and realize that this is a building site. If you are determined to live in the property while it's done, the trick is to only keep out the bare essentials. 
But Gina and the family's things are everywhere, making it difficult for the builders and impossible for her. Even the tiniest bit of building work causes chaos throughout the house. But you can make living on site a little easier by storing your stuff away. If you haven't used it in the last two weeks, you don't need it, so pack it away. Dust gets into everything, so use airtight containers, and it may sound obvious, but label everything clearly so you can find things if you have to without turning out every box. If you've got a garage or roof to put things, then get it all out of the way. If you haven't, then turn one room into a storage space and seal up the door. It's now six weeks into the development, and Gina still hasn't decided what the new layout's going to be, so the builders still haven't been able to give her a final price. Gina wanted to project manage this development to save money, but she's no idea what the jobs are going to cost. It could be thousands overspent, but Gina wouldn't know. On her tiny budget, she really needs to be watching every single penny. I was wondering about a dark granite and what sort right. of price I'd look, be looking at for that. I'm probably looking at around about three and a half thousand to actually do the kitchen. Right. But it does look very nice. Mm. Mm. Gina's entire kitchen budget is only three thousand pounds. I think her head's writing checks her budget can't cash. Most high street shops will help you plan out your kitchen. But you have to remember not to get carried away and end up spending more than you can afford. What Gina doesn't know is that at the house, the builders have decided to rip out the old kitchen. Seven weeks before the new one arrives. How are you meant to cook a meal in this? Tonight, I've got no choice and neither of you. That's all I've got in the cupboard. I didn't know we were only going to have a microwave and you're just going to have to manage tonight. I'm definitely getting personally involved. And it, no, you can't give the ants some sugar. Um, it's hard not to because we've got a family living. We're here living as a family. Um, and the decision... Oh, no, that was electricity on and off. Very quick, Jess. I'm not going to be able to cook sausages like that. Living in the property has been really difficult for Gina and the family, but I think she's made it worse. The project manager should run every aspect of the job, but Gina hasn't, and there's a real danger it will cost her dear. I am concerned that as, as we're going through and... and that as the work's going on, that there are going to be more costs added up. The job it was to start off with has changed quite a bit and different things now that we're going to do and not going to do. We've worked together on a sort of more, oh yeah, okay, that'll be a sort of ad hoc basis. You know, we don't have an infinite amount of money. Extra costs that have come in that we haven't factored in, such as putting the pipes into the wall, buying new radiators, and that's all adding the cost up. And I'm just really aware of keeping things down. Gina may be aware that her budget is rising, but she doesn't seem to be doing very much about it. She must decide what the builders are supposed to be doing and get it priced. Because at this rate, she could be spending more than the property is actually worth. But Gina only seems interested in turning the stairs. This will cost her thousands that isn't in her budget and won't actually add a penny to the value. The stairs have been my biggest headache, um, but also, an absolutely essential part of the project. It's something that I can't even imagine not doing now. My worry is if you don't spend enough on the stairs, you may end up with something that's less satisfactory than what you've already got. Well, I've had a quote um, from my builders and for an oak staircase, they're quoting me two and a half to install it, do all the joist work and everything. I measured it, and I can't tell you, like you're saying, the going, the rise, the tread depth, making sure it's at 41 degrees and not more than that. Oh. If you are determined to design them yourself, make sure you choose the best stairs for your development because getting it wrong can make it very difficult to sell. Just because a staircase looks great, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right one. Modern open tread steps open up a space, but they will limit your market. If it's a loft for young professionals, you should be fine. 
but they're a big no-no for buyers with young kids. Spiral staircases can be a problem. People think they save space, but it isn't actually the case. And they're more difficult to use, which can put more people off than they attract. Putting in a new staircase is expensive, so if money's an issue, then keep it simple and you'll keep costs down. A straight off the peg run is cheaper than one with twists and turns. I'd only recommend replacing the stairs if you're radically changing the layout, they're totally wrong for the market or they're dangerous, because it's very unlikely they'll actually add value to the house. Though done well, they may make it easier to sell. Six weeks into this project and Gina's realized she's got to make some cuts. And we decided the stairs and the entrance is really paramount for the first impression. And losing the fourth bedroom has been a consequence of that. I want to see upstairs and what your plans have been for all Fine. the bedrooms and bathrooms. OK. Have you decided to keep the ensuite idea for your bedroom and chop it into this bedroom? No, I haven't decided. If you haven't decided whether you're going to do the ensuite now, wh when are you planning on deciding? Maybe? I haven't set a date for that, I have to be honest. <laughs> Pop it in the diary, decision date. Um, I do think that it's that is probably the one a good thing. idea to make a decision, actually. In fact, I'd go a bit, a bit sort of stronger than that and say, you've got to make a decision. Our sweets will usually add value. So if Gina can work out how to fit one in, she should do it. But a little problem like lack of space doesn't stop Gina from choosing what should go in it. Yeah, yeah there's some nice stuff in here. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> so this is the kind of look that you're hoping for, is it? Yeah, I really like it. I think the modern look for the bathroom would be really nice. Oh my God, it's 4,140 I know. It may be beautiful, but with a £2,000 bathroom budget, it's crazy to even consider spending £4,000 on a sink. But Gina's being entirely unrealistic about this whole project and seems to have forgotten that she's supposed to be doing this as a job to make money. Shopping around for ideas is great, but you need to find a way of creating the luxury look within your budget. But I mean, what you could do is take ideas from this and if you think very laterally, this is what I meant about being sort of inventive mm. with your design. And this is now you can save costs because you could use beach block worktop, which is really quite cheap for a long length. Use a piece of that and get the bowls and put it on. Or you could use ply and varnish ply. And there's, think about other materials which are much cheaper and then create this effect. You do have to do it very well because if you don't do it very well, it'll look really awful. Mm. Make use of what you've already got. A decent bathroom suite can be made to look fantastic with new taps and towel rails. Avoid a brass finish. It's a bit last year and may put more people off than it will impress. If you don't have much to spend, then go for a simple white suite but splash out on accessories, which you can always take to the next development. Getting your bathroom properly installed is key. Even an expensive bathroom will look terrible if it's been badly fitted. Spend money on finishing and the tiling, and even the cheapest suite can look classy. Whatever Gina has been uncertain about, she is always known for sure that she wanted the stairs changed. concerned that Gina hasn't been realistic about the development from day one. She's invested going on half a million pounds, but is nowhere near in control. And it seems that you are making progress now, but um, you're sort of approaching it in a way more like a, a homeowner, because it, uh, when people buy houses, they move in and they think one year, you know, might have a bit of extra money and they think, oh, I think we'll put a new door there and they do it. And then a year later, they might think, oh, I th wouldn't it be lovely to have an ensuite there and they put that in. Really with development, you have to sit down at the initial stages and decide what you're going to do and do it. And I think at this stage, you really need to sit down and work out what you're trying to do and how much that's going to, is going to cost. 
and work out the overall project because the danger with doing it this way is you kind of either miss things along the way or you actually end up making no money. Is it to you important that you earn the equivalent of, of a salary or is this a hobby? No, it's important that it becomes a job. So if you don't earn enough in a year or two, then you're going to have to, the, the equivalent of, of a salary, you'll have to go back to work or do something else. Or I'll have to do something or... else, whatever it is, yeah, I, I will. Gina's got so much riding on this development, she really does need to turn it around. They look great, I'm really pleased. I went on the internet um, and it was basically a step-by-step -step process of learning what's a going, what's a right, how do I do it, how to do the technical drawings, and I've done that and it's just been hell. Turning the stairs does look good, but it's used up Gina's entire £2,500 contingency. She hasn't got a penny to spare should anything go wrong. Hello. Good morning. Come to look at your staircase. Gina Reedy sold the family home and invested over £400,000 in this three-bedroom house in Caterham, Surrey. She's living on site with her family. How are you meant to cook a meal in this? The kitchen's gone. It's just everywhere. And the house is in total chaos. Gina hasn't been managing the job, and because she keeps changing her mind, she has no clear idea of what this development's going to cost. She spent her entire contingency putting in a new staircase, but during the work, the builders discovered a problem and Gina's called in a structural engineer to check it out. Do you see it's both coming down this way, so right. it's lower in the middle than at these ends? Yes, yes. So if we, should we get that floorboard up? Right. Oh, I see. Oh, it's not supported at all, is it? That um, section or... No, it doesn't look no, like it. No, no. Upstairs, the internal brick walls aren't properly supported from below and have begun to drop. So we're going to have to probably put some new beams in then? Quite likely, yes. There might be timber, or if there's steel, there'll just be small steel beams. Would it be cheaper to consider taking the brick wall down and putting up a plasterboard wall? Uh, it might be cheaper to replace the wall with a stud. Right. Yes. It, it might, might not be as expensive as it sounds. It sounds expensive, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having the new walls put in has, is going to cost about 3,000, just under 3,000. And that doesn't include all the other bits like the extra cost. The structural engineer's report costs 352 pounds. And that maybe in the whole scheme of things doesn't seem a lot, but it's a lot. With no contingency to fall back on, every pound Gina spends brings her closer to losing money. Living in this house has been difficult from day one, but now the whole upstairs has been ripped out, it's total chaos. With the first floor out of bounds, the family have been forced to move everything into the two rooms downstairs. Not surprisingly, it's beginning to get them down. We never anticipated that the walls were going to have to come down. Now we're having all the walls replaced. They're all being plastered, and it's where we sleep while the wet plaster's going on. With half the house uninhabitable and the other half a complete mess, finally the family moves into a local hotel. And although it's a well-needed rest, it's also more money that isn't in the budget. To push things forward, I've decided it's a good time to take Gina to a shop that specialises in period 1950s pieces. You know when you said in my house there's quite a few fine 1950s details, what were you thinking of? Well, there's the floor, there's the architecture, there's the doors, they're, they're all 1950s in style. And so I think... People gone! <laughs> no, they? When did you do that? I did that last week! <laughs> God! If there's one thing about Gina, it's that she always does the unexpected. But downstairs, the parquet floor, fireplaces and door furniture are all still there. You can still pick up 1950s retro 
items which will really fit in your house because although it is really fashionable they're still relatively cheap and if you go around car boot sales and junk shops and you, you're careful about what you buy and you think laterally you can create the most fantastic kind of modern retro effect mm. in that house i have to balance keeping it in tune with the house but also not being too extreme you know because you could go for a really retro lovely retro which i think would look great maybe in london in a, a flat or something like that but in a house in middle class suburbia it might be and now i see i agree with you and there's but there's a there's a point you can go to and then mm. you can't go too far and um, this is actually quite a specialist shop mm. but you can probably if you're careful and you're clever you can probably get reproduction lampshades and things that will actually fit in really well period features are generally worth keeping in your development but if you really want them out they may be worth something to someone else so do try and sell them if you're not sure what's got value then take a trip to the salvage yards and specialist shops to see what they're selling and how much they're selling it for Keeping the period look may be cheaper than putting in new, and you can often replace broken and missing items by searching around. Don't rush into things. It's always worth trying to keep fixtures and fittings like door handles and lights until you've done some research. It could save you hundreds of pounds. Over lunch, I discover that Gina has left something crucial out of her budget. I have to say, I'm worried about your whole project in terms of the fact that you're at 410, your selling fees, 3% plus fat to an agent, is going to be nigh on £20,000. So that's 430. Gosh, is it? Yeah. I, so have, no, I, ha I have to be honest, I hadn't realised it was going to be that much. That's something I haven't researched. So that's really interesting. So it's going to be close to £20,000. Yeah. I'm really concerned about this development because Gina just doesn't seem to have thought it through. Before you go anywhere near buying a property, you must calculate exactly what it's going to cost. But Gina has invested hundreds of thousands of pounds and hasn't got a clue. Once it's up with the oak, it might look great, but it's just not what we really wanted. It's crucial that Gina gets this finished as quickly and cheaply as she can and gets it back on the market. At last, things do seem to be moving forward. Designed the stairs yourself. What, did the measurements of the rising and the and the tread, or the rising and the going, as they call it. The going, it. indeed. <laughs> but, and they fit, and they fit beautifully. And hats off to you. I think you've done Thank really you. well. Thanks. It does actually feel like it is always like this. Someone's not going to come in and go, "Wow, great!" Oh no, they're just they're just how it should be. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. All the agony and the extra then, cost. I suppose. In total, but, it's three and a half thousand because it was two thousand and for the actual stairs, and then one and a half for the installation. Three months in, and I've come to see how it's going. And true to form, Gina's got yet more surprises. Oh, you've got a bathroom there. Yes. So I did have. you put the ensuite in then? No, uh, I have not there though. Over here, it's in this room. Because uh, it's a completely different layout. Yes, it it's is. I've had to change everything because of the walls. Taking the walls out upstairs gave Gina a blank canvas and the chance to change all her plans again. But this time for the best. Gina's put two smaller bedrooms and a family bathroom on one side. Then she's created a large master bedroom with ensuite bathroom on the other. So this is now the master bedroom. Gosh, it's a great size room. So you've knocked through the bedroom, the family bathroom and the airing cupboard and ended up with the master suite you always wanted. Yeah, it's great. I mean, um, initially, I hadn't planned to bring down the walls and do all this. It was really just to t tart it up and check everything was working up here. Um, my budget didn't take it into account, and consequently, it's added probably close to 5,000 or maybe a bit more on the budget. But I've ended up with this, which is great. I'm really pleased. It was money well spent as far as I'm concerned. So this is how we're living at the moment. <laughs> oh dear, Gina. <laughs> 
So are you finding it quite hard living like this? You're, you're, you've moved down from upstairs then, all of you, and your two children are sleeping in here on the sofa and the floor, and you're sleeping mm, next sleeping. door. Mm. Are you finding it hard living like this? I'm not now, but at first, it, I just felt like I'd lost the will to live when I found out that all of the upstairs had to be either packed up and put in the garage or brought down here. I mean, I really admire you for just keeping going with it. It's brilliant, but you're, you're sort of out the other side. It's all on the, you're on the home straight now, aren't you? So you'll be back upstairs before you know it. With the project getting close to completion, Gina really does need to get going in the garden. It should be a major selling point for the property. Back in April, the garden was a jungle, and come August, on the hottest day of the year, nothing's changed. Obviously, today is not the day to be doing gardening, because apart from the fact that you would faint from the heat, so would the plants, but it's a really good idea, as soon as possible, to really start thinking about, the, especially this front garden, because it's such a big area, and it's so important to have curb appeal. So when somebody drives up and parks the car, you want them to get out and just think, goodness, I really want that house. And they say that a large percentage of people who buy houses have made up their mind before they get to the front door. So it's really, really, really important to think about that. First impressions are so important with a new development, so I've taken Gina to see what her neighbours have done, hoping that it will inspire her. This is beautifully maintained, this garden. It just gives such a impression as you walk up here. It does. It? Look how nicely it's trimmed. Really yeah. nice driveway. It is. It looks great. And I like the little bushes leading you in. Well, this looks so smart up yeah, here. And as does. you walk up to the house, it all looks beautifully kept. And, and the garage is very nice. What are you doing with your garage? I plan to replace the front fascia and paint it and then paint the two doors, probably just black, and keep the garage white and it'll look the same as the house. Yeah, blend in with the yeah. house. And look great, fantastic. Well, this is oh, nice. This is really pretty. It is. Tell you what it does, this garden, because it's it's so pretty and so well maintained that it just makes it look effortless. Mm. And whoever ends up buying a house, if the garden looks like this, it won't, they won't actually think about how much maintenance it takes. But it gives it the impression of an effortless, beautiful garden. Four months in and the development is nearly finished, but I'm worried her spending is out of control and she's got a completely unrealistic sales price in mind. I think it's really good to be coming towards the end of the project, but obviously then there's the £50 million pound question of has this all been worth the money that's been spent on it and how much is it going to be valued at? Amazingly, after four months very hard work, this development has finished on time. Though no one's quite sure about just how far it's off budget. Gina really hoped to sell for £450,000, but that was for a four-bedroomed house. And I think she'll struggle now it's just three. This house has a massive front garden, and it could have been breathtaking. But Gina's done next to nothing, and this is a mistake. It's difficult to overestimate just how important first appearances are. A coat of paint on the garage doors simply isn't enough. It lets the property down, which is a shame if it puts people off before getting them through the front door. Inside, there's been an incredible transformation. The new staircase does look superb, and it's a tribute to Gina's perseverance, but it's come at a cost. A cost of £3,500. It won't add anything to the value, and I think it was really a mistake she can't afford. Fifties kitchen has gone and been replaced by a modern kitchen diner, and it's perfect for Gina's market. But it cost her two thousand pounds more than she'd budgeted. Knocking through the old utility room was a great idea, and it's made the room seem double the size. I'm glad she took my suggestion to change the layout so there's room for a massive table and the new French windows opening out onto the garden. 
I think this room will definitely help sell this house. One area where Gina didn't overspend was the sitting rooms. They've both been stripped back and the original features Gina didn't throw out shine through. The ugly pipe work's gone and the new radiator is hidden out of view. And I think both the rooms look great. But the thing I'm most impressed with about Gina's development is the staircase, which she designed herself following instructions off the internet. This is just so brilliant. You finally got the two-story staircase that you really wanted. And it makes the very most of the glass, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it's nice to be able to see that glass above the doors now. I'm not trying to be really annoying and put a dampener on the development, but the stairs don't actually add any value to the house. All that it does is make it a more workable space for living in. You know, you walk in the front door and you're not walking back into a wall. It's a very efficient use of space, the way it is. Having to knock the walls down upstairs cost Gina money she couldn't afford. But she made the most of it and her new layout is ideal. She's managed to create an ensuite shower room, which is one improvement that will really add value. Again, like the staircase, you haven't actually got much more than you had in the first place. You, it's, a, it's a great layout of space, but I don't think you've probably added that much value from shifting the space around. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I, I suppose one of the issues is I got my two-storey hall, but would I have been better squeezing in a single bedroom? And I may have been, because as you said, the stairs didn't add the value, whereas a fourth box room may have done. As a home, I think you've won all the way around. It's fantastic. It's the best possible solution. Development, that's where it starts to look slightly rocky. Gina should have paid less for this house because of its awkward layout. And although she's improved it, the price she paid left her no room for profit. Gina's original budget was £18,000. She allocated £8,500 for the building work, but this nearly doubled to £15,000. £3,000 for the kitchen, which eventually came out at £5,000. There was nothing in the budget for turning the staircase around, and that set Gina back £3,500. She clawed back some costs on the bathroom budget, which dropped from £2,500 to £1,250. And the £1,500 in the budget for decoration? Gina managed to bring this down to £1,250. But this still means Gina spent £26,000. That's £8,000 more than she'd planned. So it is quite a lot overspent, isn't it, On t in terms of your budget? You originally had to spend 18. It's gone up a lot. How do you think it went up so much? It was 3,000 something for the walls to come down, another 3,000 for the stairs. So of that 8,000, 6,000 were those two things. So the extra 2,000 over overspend um, was down to radiators, which I hadn't budgeted for. Um, extra pipe work, you know, little little bits that have made a big difference in the look. Gina spent £387,000 on this property, including stamp duty and fees. Her budget has risen to 26000 This means her total investment is £413,000. If you add in selling fees at around 15000 Gina will have to sell for £428,000 to break even on this development. That's £3,000 more than the top price for a three-bedroom house back in April. Nice light hallway. The stairs are nice. Original floor. These are obviously new radiators. The fireplace is lovely. It's a nice feature to the room. It's a great first impression. Well, this has been very well planned. We're worried a little bit about storage. There's no wall units. Nice modern extractor fan. 
The garden's not quite as big as I thought it might be. Nice wide plot. I'm quite surprised that they've missed the opportunity of bringing out the fourth bedroom. I do like this landing. This landing area is very impressive. Oh, this is nice. No wardrobes, interestingly. Nice colour scheme. It's arguably slightly small, but um, it serves its purpose. Power shower, which is good. I would value this property at £410,000. I would put this property on the market at a figure of 415000 Something between 420 and 435 for the house. If Gina sells for the maximum value, this means she would make £7,000 for four months living and working in a building site. If she gets the minimum value, she's lost £18,000. We have had three agents in, okay. and they've actually come in at 410, 415, and 420. Oh, God, that's more than I expected. So you're quite pleased with that? I wouldn't say I'm thrilled to pieces, but I'm shocked. Because the reason I'm shocked is the houses down the road that are on the market, four bedroom, that have just sold. One's f sold at 426 and one at 430, and that really shocks me. Yeah, I have to say, I'm, I'd be surprised if we got a buyer in who is interested in paying between 415 and 420. Thrilled, but surprised. I do think 410 is top whack for this house, but would you put it on the market at 430 and see what happens? I'd probably put it on the market at 435 and see what happens. I just don't think I'm going to get 435, whatever you do to it. Well, maybe only have Nothing seems to deter Gina, and she's already got her eye on the next project. What are you planning on doing then? I'm planning to buy a barn in Kent that's on the market at the moment and do that up and sell it. Got planning permission for conversion to a three bedroom house and it's on the market for 80,000. How much will that be worth when it's finished, do you think? I don't know. I need to research the area a bit more to find out what the market's like down there. Well, you're probably looking at 200,000, two, yeah. Just below two, maybe. And spend 50 on it. Ah, this, this is where you come unstuck. I think you should reckon you're going to spend at least 80. I think 50, we'll see. <laughs> Come back and visit me and we'll see what happens. Do you know, happens. I might just do that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'd never criticise anyone for making a home for their family, but that's not what developing is all about. Gina bought this property intending to make money on it, but the reality is she paid too much for it and she never really got control of the job. But luckily for Gina, she doesn't have to sell this house, so at least she gets to enjoy the lovely home she's created. Now that she's potentially made a loss on this development, Gina has decided to stay put and enjoy her lovely family home.